Well, hey there, everybody at Snackbox coming to you from an absolutely gorgeous day here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a little bit chilly, but it's really beautiful, but it's still not as beautiful as the Collegiate West segment four. We've got a lot to talk about, not a lot of time. Let's get to it. Stick around, stick around, sorry. So the Collegiate West segment four goes from Tin Cup Pass Road all the way to the Boss Lake Trailhead. It's 15.9 miles and it goes up in elevation about 27, 2800 feet and goes down in elevation about 3400 feet. So this is going to lose a lot of elevation over the course of that distance. However, one of the things that's really important to know is that it opens with a really steep climb out of that Tin Cup Pass Road. And so you're going to climb and climb and climb. This is one of those sections that if you remember from my earlier videos, what you have to remember is that the elevation charts at the bottom on the data book can be a little bit deceptive at times based on how long the distance of the segment is compared to the elevation rise and fall. Just know that that climb from the Tin Cup Pass Road out of there can be pretty tough. It's going to go up in elevation about a thousand feet over the course of about two and a half miles, which is pretty steep. My general rule is that if it's more than three, four hundred feet of elevation gain per mile, that's a pretty challenging section. So I always try to allot a little extra time for those sections. Now, segment four of the Collegiate West does tend to stay above tree line for a good bit of the distance. So some of those tips that I mentioned to you are earlier about looking for exit routes in case there's a storm. Those all really apply, especially in a 16 mile segment where it's unlikely that you'll be able to make it through the whole segment without some time above tree line after that two o'clock window when the storms tend to push in really quickly. So keep those in mind always and absolutely. One of the tips that I have for this segment is that you don't need to carry a lot of water throughout the segment. Actually, when you look over the, the landscape of the entire stretch, the longest you'll go without water is about a mile and a half. And for me, that's about a half hour walk. So it makes it a lot easier to make some good time through this segment. You're going to pass a lot of water throughout the segment. You're going to pass a lot of different lakes, obviously. And then most of the trail is actually going to parallel a number of different rivers, including the middle fork of the South Arkansas River and a number of other smaller creeks and rivers throughout that area of the mountains. I'm really struggling today. Holy moly, 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 moly. Now, my first tip for this segment is to camp at either the Hancock Lake or the upper Hancock Lake. You want to decide based on how early you get to the lakes. If you get there really early, say two or three in the afternoon, what I would recommend doing is stopping for a little while, waiting out by the tree line, and then heading up and setting up camp later in the day. This will allow you to make sure that you stay unexposed for the majority of those danger hours, and then you can make your way up from there. However, if you show up later in the day, you see that the skies are clear and you're probably going to be okay by way of storms, go ahead and set up at that upper Hancock Lake, which is not far from there. The reason I mention this is that there are two high points in the segment, and that's going to set you up at the base of the second one. That way, when you wake up early in the morning, you can go ahead and hop over that and make some good ground through the tougher stretches before it gets too late in the day. So it really will help you set up to hop over one of those and not have to not have to consider when you're getting over that pass. It's also worth knowing that around this area, there are a lot of day hikers. So just be aware of that and, and know that you're likely to see a few day hikers throughout this area. So sort of between that section of the Tin Cup Pass Road and the Hancock Lake, you're going to see a lot of those day hikers kind of making their way through there. That's good to know just in case you end up in some sort of an emergency situation. So don't feel like you're going west and you're going to be totally isolated that whole time that you may have a hard time hitching from there. But if you were in a real emergency, you could probably find somebody to tow you out of town and you're only about 15, 16 miles from the Mount Princeton Hot Springs where many of your friends who chose to go east will probably be soaking their feet. My second tip for you through this segment is to take some time and really enjoy that stretch when you go through the Alpine Tunnel segment of the trail. This is a segment where years and years and years ago, there was actually a contest to see if somebody could build a locomotive that would go through upper Alpine Mountain snow. So they built a train track that goes kind of through this and you'll be walking on the old bed of that train and that experiment. I don't remember the exact story of it, but this is a really good section because you're going to find that you could make some really great time, but I'm going to encourage you to actually take your time and walk through it and enjoy this because a lot of the next segment is going to be really challenging and the remaining part of this segment will be really tough as well. So take your time going through this stop a lot. There are going to be little signs throughout the segment that will tell you about the history of that project with the train track. Take some time and read those and just enjoy that as well because there are not many segments where you can really get into history, but this segment and the next segment both have some really cool historical attractions. So if you're a history buff and really into the culture of the trail and how it came to be, this is a great spot to spend some time and enjoy yourself as well. My last piece of advice for you is actually pretty similar to a number of the other uh, number of the other segments, but it becomes really important at this point. And that is to really pay attention to your ankles and how tired you are. In this segment, you might be a little bit tired. You might be a little bit exhausted. And what happens with those moments is that you tend to choose your footing really 
really poorly. For me, what I start to notice is that if I'm really tired, I'll start kicking rocks, meaning that I'm not lifting my foot up as high, so I'll catch my toe on a lot of rock. When I catch myself doing that, I know that it's either time to stop for the day or to take a pretty significant break. It's much better for me to stop and wait a little while to catch my rest and let my muscles recover a bit than it would be for me to get hurt or injured. This is particularly important when you get to some of these areas in segment four and segment five of the Collegiate West, because one, there are going to be a lot more rocks and a lot more boulders that you could catch your toe on. And two, you're likely to be even more exhausted. So at these points, if you have trekking poles out, I would have them out at all times. If you are wearing higher ankle boots, you want to make sure that they're nice and laced up really tightly so that you don't end up rolling your ankle at any point and really pay attention to your body at this point. A lot of times we set certain goals for ourselves and we decide, you know what, this segment, I'm going to do it in this amount of time. But the trail doesn't care what your plans are. The trail will be what it is. So just make sure that you allot yourself enough time that you can adjust for that as well and really pay attention to those ankles. Trekking poles are really, really recommended at this point. If you don't have trekking poles at this point, I highly recommend you get a pair. They're a game changer for everybody that I've ever met. They always start out hiking and backpacking and they're resistant to trekking poles and then they all eventually end up picking them up and falling in love with their trekking poles. Now's the time to start your love affair with those trekking poles. This segment particularly is one where you're going to have a lot of descent and descent tends to be a place where if you're on a rocky area with a lot of descent, that's where a lot of those ankle injuries tend to happen. So it's really good to have those trekking poles out and ready so that you can really enjoy that trip. Well, don't enjoy that trip. The whole idea is that you're not going to trip. Sorry, everybody. I'll be better. Promise. One of the things that's really important at this point, this may seem like a surprise, turn around a lot. So when you're walking and you take breaks, turn around and check out the view behind you. Because as I mentioned in the last video, Tin Cup Pass is my favorite section of the whole entire trail. So you're going to climb up from Tin Cup Pass Road. If you turn around, there's a sort of hanging bowl. And that's basically where the mountains create this bowl. And there's a little lake off to the side. It's just incredible. It's spectacular. I don't know that I would camp there because it's really high and exposed. And also I try not to camp in an alpine elevation when possible, because that tends to be really hard to let the landscape recover when you camp there. I think it's still well worth a stop for lunchtime if you get a chance or maybe a breakfast. You know how I like to stop for a cup of coffee in the morning, but just make sure you're turning around a lot. When you stop for water, turn around, check out the view. It's a totally different trail when you're seeing it from that direction. So for those of you going northbound, same thing. Turn around and look around a lot. Make sure that you're checking out those views from every angle. These segments in the Collegiate West are where it's especially important because these are truly some of the most beautiful until you get to the San Juans and then it's going to get uh, it's going to get insane there as well. So I hope this information is useful to you. If you do find it helpful, I hope that you'll click like and subscribe below. That really helps as we build this community. I really feel like I'm getting to know a lot of you even better and I'm grateful for all of you who have joined this community. So be sure you click that button so you can be part of this community as we continue to grow and plan and think about backpacking and all those things we, we all have in common and all love. I also hope that you'll find me at Backcountry Champion on Instagram. And if you do, I'll send over a free sticker to you. So just send me a message on Instagram. You don't even have to follow me on that. Just send a message and say, hey, Snackbox, hit me up with one of those sweet stickers and I'll put one in the mail to you. Really grateful to have this community building the way that it is. And that's my little way of saying thank you to you. So I hope that you'll send me a message over there. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. And we'll be back soon with segment five of the Collegiate West. I can't wait because we're almost there. Thanks everybody. Snackbox out. To so the Boss Lake Trail. Trailhead. Trailhead. Trailhead.